My name is Ian Natupski. I'm from New York originally. People are actually living down here in the metro because it's one of the most, it's the safest place that they can be. And uh, look at this, it's a winter wonderland here. Isn't this amazing? This is really amazing. It's a war going on upstairs. But people are trying to make it, you know, make it as best they can. And they're doing a great job. The resiliency of the Ukrainian people is phenomenal. I've been to many different types of Christmases. So this will be the first one as a humanitarian aid volunteer. So uh, it's Christmas Eve and we're uh, dropping food supplies off at a metro station in Kharkiv. I don't know what else to say. I mean, just how can this be happening right now? Dog? Like this dog? doing humanitarian aid work here, uh, focusing on bringing in nutritional food for the front line and for orphanages. Uh, in addition to that, we're looking into water filtration units. I decided to stay in Lviv and make this my base. Lviv is a beautiful city. It just, it, it captured me. It's the closest, largest city to Poland. So, and in the event of an emergency, I can roll out of here extremely quickly. Today we had, what I'm hearing is 120 missile strikes. What it did was it knocked out all power to all of the city the internet, cell service, which is now starting to come back a little bit. So, you know, as I'm walking through the city here, you're hearing all the uh, noise. This noise is from generators. They're everywhere so that you can provide services to the customers. So everywhere you go, the sounds of generators ring out. I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina. I was working for a financial institution. I work with municipalities. I work with banks, insurance companies, helping them with their investment portfolios. It's great as far as, you know, generating a good income, having a nice lifestyle. But, um, you know, with Russia invading Ukraine, I realized immediately that this has to take a priority and that uh, I need to be here helping as much as possible because the idea of a Russia win with this war, in my mind, is just not acceptable. I look at this as the dividing line between freedom and democracy and autocracy or dictatorship. I know what Putin wants. He wants Ukraine, Poland, Latvia, Lithuania. He wants all of it. He wants to recreate the Russian Empire. We didn't necessarily want to come, but we couldn't not. We, we had no... Did we just lose power again? <sighs> Great. Um, yeah, we, we, we were compelled to be here and help in any way we could. You want to go for a ride? I wanted the dog to stay with the kids in North Carolina, but you know their mom not being able to keep the dog uh, for an extended, indefinite period of time. Most people, Bear brings a smile to their faces, whether it's kids, adults, so it's almost like a therapy. No barking. Let's go. Bear.
Thank you guys for your help. Here's my card. Okay. Mother for Ukraine. Well, that's it. So we are always getting medical supplies back and forth. I'm based in Lviv. So if you guys need something in particular, let me know. Yeah. Good luck. Stay Good safe. Luck. Good luck. I've done, you know, other types of first aid training, but nothing to the extent of wounds caused by ammunition, uh, missile strikes, uh, shrap metal. Never done anything like that. <laughs> We were trying to simulate a live action front line red zone situation where people are injured and we have to come in and we need to uh, deal with the, those injuries and as quickly as possible get them to a triage location which was up there. Without this course I would have been definitely lost as far as the steps that are needed to be taken in order to, you know, prevent death. go in here. Most of the volunteers uh, came over on their own dime. They have people sponsoring them, they're getting donations, people are trying to get their organization set up in the United States as 501c3s. But yeah, I mean, it's gotten to a place where people are running out of money. They're running out of patience, they're tired. These are the toys for the one to three year olds. We got um, 20, supposedly 20 one to three year old kids. So we got these little things for them. Then I got uh, these for the three to six year olds. Pretty cool. So that's their treat. So something for everybody. I spent about 12,500 grivna. Kharkiv used to be a beautiful city, a bustling city, and now it's a good chunk in ruins. I'm in the Saltivka district, the largest, was the largest community district within Europe. and. Um, there were approximately 400,000 residents living here prior to the war. People that we were distributing supplies to in the underground used to live here. There's a smell. It smells like destruction. I don't know if it's uh, the materials for bombing or if it's something else, but uh, it's very noticeable. Dude, you made it! I made it. Hey, what are you? Brother! Oh, 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 wow! This is great, man. This is great. Welcome to uh, Kharkiv. This is my son, Mac. Ian. Nice to meet you. You Mark, too. Martha. Hey, Martha. Ian, nice Martha. to meet you. Listo! Okay. Oh. 
We're packing up 400 bags to deliver to 400 families, along with toys and other things tomorrow in a village that was occupied by the Russians. Yes. How's it going today, brother? All right. How are you? Yeah, you made, it. made it. Excellent. Made it. Come join us. Please, please, please. Who the last is? Hey, guys. He is here. Welcome to the uh, Christmas mission uh, 2022 in Ukraine. We're going to go to this town called Volokiv Yar. Yeah. Yes? Okay, excellent. So we're going to take a, a group photo now. And Tim Hortons. There you go. Being here in Ukraine, um, I have met people from all over the world. I've worked with people from all over the world. This is truly an international volunteer community that's taking place here and we're getting close to our destination point Volohiv Yar and um, we are now in what was formerly occupied territory occupied Russian territory that was liberated uh, about two or three months ago Just hand them, hand it over the top. Watch. It's okay, it's okay, we got more. Are you doing okay? She will repair her house. She repair her house after damage. Honestly, I've learned a great deal about the way I lived in the United States with all these things, material things, big house, car. I don't really need that much anymore to be happy. So I wanted to be here in order to assess what was happening. If you don't have boots on the ground and you're not seeing what's happening, you're not going to be able to do much of anything. A lot of people don't trust the news anymore. I don't blame them, but I'm seeing everything firsthand. I'm here. 